I'm calling to order the special session of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpon Springs on Monday, November 9th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. Ms. Manus' roll call, please. Mayor Al who's this? Here. Vice Mayor Carr? Here. Mr. Terrapani? Here. Mr. Donovan? Here. Mr. Vatigos? Here. Well, it's good to be back in the City Hall. This is actually our first meeting in person since the uh, coronavirus suspended all the uh, in-house meeting. And again, welcome and thank you all for being here tonight. But we still have to follow the uh, CDC guidelines. This is very important. And I wanna thank you for your cooperation. The only item that we have on the agenda tonight is a town hall meeting for the sponge ducks. And uh, staff report, Mr. Likouris. I'll start you off with uh, kind of where we left off. Um, I'll be talking about the packets that you have. I'll start with the last two pages because that's where we kind of left off. Um, the Board of Commissioners uh, instructed me to go and have a town hall meeting with the sponge docks that many of you were at. Um, that meeting was on February 28, 2020. Um, we had a very good meeting that day and the whole intent of the commission sending me down to the town hall meeting was that to follow up, there would be a town hall meeting in city hall where you could tell the same ideas, uh, additional ideas or some feedback from what you've heard at that meeting to the city commission. Obviously COVID-19 hit and that prohibited um, what we thought originally was gonna be a short time, but it's been a long time till um, November when it's lifted and we're able to have this town hall meeting. So this was supposed to be a continuation of meeting from February 28, 2020. Um, now you're here hopefully to, to give the commission the same good feedback that you gave me, probably some additional feedback um, from COVID and from what you've seen. Basically what we've handed out to you is, it starts off, there's an introduction uh, from the mayor about some topics um, that he thinks to be covered. Um, the next couple items are, the next item, couple items are an item that's gonna be covered on November 17th at the commission meeting. Um, this was something that was talked out at our February 8th, 28th meeting. It's about the sound system for the docks, um, webcam at the docks. Um, this is just some preliminary, preliminary information for you to see what's coming. Again, the official presentation is going to be at the November 17th Board of Commissioner meeting. After that, we have a, a list of some of the sponge docks improvements and activities we've made from 2015 to the present. Um, the next item is a, a Superlink dashboard that we're talking about. Again, this will be something else that's talked about November 17th. Um, the next long series of thing is about the sponge docks gateway sign. That was one of the issues that came up um, rather prevalent in that meeting. Um, what you have in here is the survey that was taken um, that probably most of you hopefully participated in. Um, and then the pictures that you see are just some renditions that staff, these are not official documents, staff just took what you said at the what you said in the survey and gave some examples of some types of signs um, this item on the gateway signs is going to come up the 17th also this is where the board of commissioners will look at the information from the survey look what we have seen some of the examples and also the commission will decide on the direction to move forward with the gateway sign so everybody will have a chance to the 17th, I just want to give these to you in advance to take a look at. Obviously, we're looking for different items, the base, what the words say. So these, again, these are not architect drawings. These are not what's going out to bid. These are some examples because we found out the best way um, is to have visual objects, see what you like and you don't like, and hopefully put a combination of the items we see into a gateway sign that all of you will be happy with and move forward with. So there's more conversations, but again, I want to get that information uh, to you early on that. And then after that, it's just kind of synopsis, some notes. We tried to grab and recreate the notes from the 28th and give some notes about the, some of the things we talked about. 
and some of the things that you were gonna bring for the board before COVID. Obviously, if you see some of these things on this list, we're already working on. Um, and again, we come to the night meeting and, and I hope you give the same good input you gave to me on the 28th. Um, so the board um, can direct me on a plan to, to carry these out. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Mayor. Thank you, thank you. Again, I wanna thank everybody for being here tonight. Also, I wanna thank everybody who's watching the uh the meeting from uh online at home the the purpose of this meeting tonight is to gather information and ideas from the business owners from the property owners and the uh, the residents we want to hear from you we want to hear your ideas your recommendations i believe the best ideas comes from the public from you so uh, uh personally some of the uh uh, items that I would like to suggest that I want to hear from you are the following. And again, of course, you can uh, uh, provide us with any ideas that you like, but uh, I, I would like to hear more about parking at the sponge ducks. I want to hear more about entry way signage, signs to direct traffic to the sponge ducks from the years 19, and especially during the special events that we're having downtown, such as the first Friday. Flooding on the deck on his boulevard. Landscaping and beautification. Beautification grants that we have available. Speak, uh, the, the, the speakers on the sponge ducks and any other issue that you think is very, very important. So please, when you come to the podium, give us the ideas that you think is gonna make the difference that we can improve the sponge ducks. With that, I would like to uh, go to the public comments. Uh, if you uh, have any, uh, comments, please come to the podium, state your name and your address for the record, and we'll be giving you four minutes. Mayor, I have a question. Yes. I have a question. Um, I, I know that this material was uh, provided late uh, on the website uh, in the agenda. I'd like to know if, has any, everybody seen this back up as far as what was provided from the February 28th minutes? And what we're planning on doing tonight. You don't have yours? Okay. Um, can everybody raise their hand who says that they've had it? They've got it? Okay. Um, that's fine. I, I think we need to kind of get this information out a little earlier to people so they can have a chance to look at it before we get into the uh, discussion. But I understand what you're getting at, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, we go to the public comments. Uh, if you have any comments, please come forward, state your name and your address for the record. You begin in four minutes. Mr. Pappas, you'll be the first. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. It's a little short here. Okay. Uh, Louis Pappas, 802 Lansden Court. I kind of have a little agenda of what I think should happen down there. I don't think in any way should, we should try to reinvent the wheel. Um, beautify the place. I think the entrance uh, way is a must. I'd like to see something bulky and heavy, nothing. Some of these drawings are excellent that y'all uh, have shown us. That item, I think, is a, a, a must. Uh, also, and uh, Mr. LaCourse can verify this, I've been fighting down there probably for the last 20 years to get rid of those oak trees. They're a mess. The sidewalks are a mess. I like to see beautiful palms put down there, canaries or whatever, that are uh, tall, that have a nice canopy, <clears throat> uplit to light the dock. The city dock is dark at night. It is really dark. So it's not, you know, people don't want to sit there because it's dark. I would like to see the parking that is on the city dock. Some of it removed, not all of it. Leave a couple spaces on each side of the diver and put seating there where people can sit under these beautiful palms that you could put in, um, you know, and beautify the street and up like the street all the way down. The palms up by the marina are gorgeous. If that would continue down in the street and get rid of the oak trees. People wanna see palms and, and they're not a mess. 
It's a mess down there in the winter, especially during tourist season. Um, the music idea is great. The webcam is great. Um, that, that's what I would like to see. Those three elements I think are very important. The entranceway to the dock, get rid of some of the parking. I don't know why we have parking on a waterfront piece of city property. When, you know, leave a couple spaces for the divers to park their vehicles where they can pull up on the dock and put some seating around there. And then of course the, uh, the palm trees. As far as the parking goes, I really don't think we have a parking issue at this point because of, of Pappas restaurant parking lot is being used. And I think, I, I, don't, I don't see a parking issue. I really don't see a parking issue. Now, if the restaurant ever gets redeveloped, that's a different story. But at this point, I don't see that at, that big of an issue. Um, that's basically what I would like to see done down there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pappas. Do we need to wear these while we're talking? Yeah, please. Does it matter if I take it off while I'm talking? Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I know that we each have four minutes, but um, I'm the chair of a um, sponge dock uh, group that uh, I chair, a subcommittee of the Merchants Association. And so I would like to take more than four minutes because we have a list of things that we discussed last week that might be easier to just give to you. In fact, I have copies so that you don't have to take notes. Um, so I don't know if somebody wants to. Uh, so Ms. Sivir, somebody's going to donate the time to you. Is that what you're uh, saying? Yeah, there were eight of us at the meeting. Uh, that's Would you please identify the people so we can put it down? Would you please identify the people so we'll make sure we put it down? OK. Uh, <laughs> Lenny, I can't see anybody with their. Uh, Jennifer. Uh, well, who else is here? Uh, yeah, Michael and uh, Mr. Um, Solveris. Yeah. Is that one packet? We got three people. Well, yeah. ten minutes of maximum you can go. Minutes. So you go. Yeah, 10 I'm minutes. not planning on taking that long anyway. Okay. Um, I just because I am the, the the vice chair of this committee and we've been meeting for a long time now. Uh, the Small Sponge Docks uh, group and a subcommittee to the Merchants Association. We meet regularly and um, have been meeting for some time. So we got together last week so that we could expedite this process maybe a little bit and give you some of our ideas. Um, I have the list of what we talked about in February uh, and of those 15 items, there's about two items on this agenda tonight. So some of those items are still items that we need to discuss or we have concerns with. Now, after I got the, uh, the backup today, I didn't get it until about three o'clock this afternoon. I wasn't aware of it. I uh, saw that I'm repeating myself in some of these items, so I'm going to skip them. Uh, but the first thing that we discussed was the flooding. That's still a big issue for us on the docks. And I know that you know the pump valves have gone in. There's been some malfunctions and some problems, but we just need an update on what's going on with that and what's going on with the dredge. Um, some timelines and, uh, and some decisions on what's been made. So that's, that's a biggie. Um, the art boxes was another thing we talked about. Uh, after talking to the public art committee, I know that uh, 20 boxes uh, were ordered and 15 are ready to be installed. Um, I heard that they probably are not gonna be installed until after the holidays, maybe in February. We wondered why, because with the holiday season coming up, we'd like to light up the docks and, and make it a pleasant experience for people coming to the docks for the holidays. So we were questioning why we have to wait until after the holidays for those uh, boxes to be installed. Uh, the public art committee has the funds. They might be able to uh, rent a cherry picker and help, help get that process done quicker. So that was one of our requests. Uh, the sound system you'll be talking about, uh, so I don't really need to go over that, uh, but one of the things we hoped for was also that that's installed before the holidays. Um, we're going to have that agenda item on the 17th, and I don't know how much time will be left to do that between the 17th and, and uh, Christmas, but it'd be great to be able to have a Christmas music down there for the holidays. Um, 
We also were requesting, as last year we did a Christmas tree lighting. I don't know if the city is planning a Christmas tree lighting this year, um, but we're asking if we can have a Christmas tree lighting on the second Saturday uh, in December and do something on the docks to celebrate Christmas, like have a second Saturday Christmas shopping where our shops are open later and we advertise it and maybe the city can help us because our merchants are, are suffering, uh, not only on the docks, the whole city. Uh, we, we miss season and we don't wanna miss the holidays as well. Uh, so what we would like to do is have some kind of uh, second Saturday hol holiday shopping fair on the docks and advertise it and do a Christmas tree lighting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Christmas decorations. I know that <laughs> we've budgeted quite a bit of money for Christmas decorations this year. Uh, will we have additional Christmas decorations on the docks? Right now we only have those little uh, tin foil wreaths that we've had for years. So I'm just wondering what's gonna go on the docks or we're wondering. Um, the other item is additional lighting. And that's one thing that Mr. Pappas also brought up. Uh, it's very dark down on the docks at night. We wanna try to make more of a nightlife on the docks, uh, have more life uh, coming and staying on the docks at night. And it's so dark down there. Uh, we had talked about even back at the February meeting about having lighting around the poles or in the trees all the way down to, to Roosevelt, all the way down to Canes. So that's something that we feel is urgent. We, we don't wanna keep waiting on that. So we'd like to try to request that you think about doing something with lighting as soon as possible. Um, Live music was one of the things that was brought up in the uh, February meeting for certain businesses that have live music um, on Athens Street or on the docks. Uh, the police are called uh, at all times of the day. Uh, so we need to be sure what the ordinance is and, and have it clarified to the police department and code enforcement because we've, we have three or four businesses that, that play live music and they don't want to have police coming to their businesses at two o'clock in the afternoon or at seven o'clock at night and asking them to shut down. So we need to clarify what the ordinance is for live music. Uh, it's been suggested that on weekends, uh, we allow live music till midnight. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna go or not, but at least some kind of decent time and, and to know what the, the rules are and the ordinances for live music so that we all know uh, and we don't have to deal with the police department when when we have live music at our establishments. Um, facade grants, um, we were able to get some facade grants last year and uh, that was great. Unfortunately, COVID happened and many of the businesses that wanted to take advantage of, of the grants uh, financially could not do it or were not, not able to do it. And uh, we'd like to see if that can be rolled over like CRA facade grants, if we can have that rolled over into the budget because there are businesses who wanna take advantage of the facade grants. So if we can make that available to businesses again, that would be very beneficial. <clears throat> I know Mr. Papa said the parking is not a problem, but it seems to be a big problem to the merchants that are part of this uh, uh, association subcommittee. And that's one of the major problems they brought up. Um, we have no available city, free city parking lots on the docks. Uh, you have to pay or try to find a place. Mm -hmm. uh, during season, it can be a problem. But the main thing I hear is our locals. They don't want to come to the docks and pay to park. So it's been suggested that we find some parking. I, I know I've suggested some lots that are for sale. There are two lots right now that are not being used that are just roped off. If the city can look at leasing or working with the owners, doing something to, to make some parking happen on the sponge docks. Because I know that you're talking about doing parking downtown but we have no parking at all on the docks that, that are free parking uh, spots for our residents and our local um, residents. Another request was to bring Night in the Islands back. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the merchants miss having Night in the Islands and having that, that culture, the Mediterranean culture, Greek culture, the activity at night. Uh, and right now I know we can't, we're not having any events, but they would like to see Night in the Islands brought back and maybe the city working with the merchants or any nonprofit that is willing to work with the city to bring Night in the Islands back. Um, the next one is the clarification on, this, on the sandwich board ordinance. I know that that's coming up. Uh, so uh, we, I, we just wanted a clarification to, to know exactly what's, what you, you need from, from the merchants. 
the central the uh, entryway sign will be discussed and that was on here also. Um, another thing was uh, safe crossing structure on alternate 19 to enable safe crossing from the docks across alternate 19 uh, to connect to Live Oak and the Pinellas Trail. Uh, it's very dangerous to cross alternate 19 from Dodecanes. And I don't know if you all have noticed there there's a stoplight there, but um, pedestrians and bicyclists are in danger there uh, for crossing, going to the trail. And there's a lot more um, traffic, foot traffic and bicyclists out right now. So we've noticed some problems with uh, with crossing. And you have you all will have a list, that list, I pass it down. If you pass it down, so it's, on, it's on a list. Um, and finally, um, we suggested that we maybe have a liaison from the city work with our committee so that we can move forward. Some of these things we've talked about for years and a lot has been done, but we need to, to, to move forward a little faster and uh, have some type, type of timelines and, and some type of direction on, on where you are and, and what's next and where we're going. Um, so it was suggested that we have a li liaison from the city that meets with us um, that keeps us up to date and lets us know what's going on so we don't wait nine months for another meeting and then we're still talking about the same things. So it's, it's important for us to have communication. A lot of people didn't know about the backup today. Um, I found out about it and, and was able to get it, but um, it was kind of late. So it's important that we communicate with the city and we know what's going on and we have some kind of uh, deadlines and, and timelines. Um, and the last thing I wanted to talk about was um, just like the pumpkin hunt, I wanted to make everyone aware that there will be a reindeer hunt on the docks. And uh, Ashley from, from the Recreation Center is gonna be going around to the businesses and asking if you wanna participate. And so that's one way to bring people into your business. Uh, you put this, it's gonna be from the, uh, December 1st to the 22nd. Uh, and you put this in your business and just like sort of the wine wax, people come in and they see your business and they have clues and they, um, they get a price if they get the clues right. Um, <coughs> sorry. And I don't know if, if I should do this now or later, but uh, Athena uh, Tardulias asked me to uh, give you all a concept of something that she's looking for and I passed that out. Uh, it's a suggestion from her to do a cover uh, on the sponge docks uh, with sun sails and also permanent cover uh, for the, uh, not only the spongers, but also for the visitors. So that's a concept that she has. She couldn't be here tonight, so she asked me to speak for her. Uh, and I'm sure that she'll, you know, get in touch with you more, but that's, those are drawings that I printed for her of, of a concept that she has to uh, make the docks uh, better for the spongers and for our visitors. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for providing the list to us. Can I add something? No. no. Hi, everybody. I was so excited to see that we were going to have this visioning meeting, and I didn't get the backup stuff until I got here. So my thoughts are a little bit more diverse than your list there. But Julie Wade, 1095 Mainsail. Thank you once again for looking at revisioning one of our town's assets, cherishing the past and keeping it relevant and accessible into the future. It's exciting to plan for progress. Congratulations, by the way, on the lovely well-lit and landscape new statue at the Cultural Center. What a welcoming invitation to that library approach. It's just two thumbs up. You got it, you finished something up with the details at the end. Please use this as an opportunity to ensure and reinforce the connectivity of the whole town. Let's take advantage of folks having closer to home trips, especially with the COVID stuff. Some of them are visiting Florida instead of going outside. Let's give them a sub superb experience here in Tarpon Springs. Our visitors come here for many reasons. Obviously, they enjoy the Greek experience at the docks and the Greek cuisine, but many folks to learn, like to learn about history and art as well. The train depot and its interesting exhibits are only open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 12 to 3. 
Every time I seem to take visitors to one of these places, oh, it's closed, what's oh, closed? The Heritage Museum, it's incredibly well curated. The display there is fantastic. It's available Monday through Friday, 10 to four. Both of those spaces give visitors an extra reason for visiting to stay longer, to come back, and they showcase our uniqueness and provide a more in-depth learning opportunity. In addition to expanding their hours and availability, I'd love to see access to them increased. Please take advantage of volunteers. Everybody knows I do that. From the first time I visited here, I immediately felt that a pedicab or a hop on off open vehicle, or nowadays an electric self-driving van of some sort should be a part of the visitor experience. Park once, visit downtown, visit Spring Bayou and the docks. It should be free, easily available and make constant circles. I'm willing to pedal. As we look at the docks specifically, please drive there yourselves, walk there and get a visitor or street view. I've done this several times recently to try to get a, an impression of what people see. As you approach from North Pinellas and cross the bridge, you're greeted with the unshielded dumpsters and the closed pappas. Then across the way, the untended parking lot with trash, weeds, dead palm branches. It obscures the mural, which should be inviting to us all. I challenge any of you, I keep hearing more signs, more signs, more signs, and I'm saying, no, no, no. I challenge any of you to walk along the shop side of Dota Canise with a family or a sweetheart. That sidewalk is narrow. Shopkeepers' wares are pushed to and sometimes past the limits, and light poles and signs force you to walk single file or drop your sweetie's hand every few feet. It's, there are rusty chain link fences between things. Some of them are broken. Weeds poke out. The parking lot at the West End is also kind of an eyesore. The pavement's bad, it's full of weeds. Tired and tatters banners flap in the breeze and now the city in an effort to expand hollow decor has added, I'm sorry, but those really cheap looking little tiny tin foil wreaths are awful, I'm sorry. They really make the wrong kind of statement. What if we closed Odekanis to motorized vehicles? We could raise the elevation to curb height, perhaps brick it. A side benefit might help alleviate the street flooding and when we have a beautiful promenade for strolling, shopping, and dining. Ms. Little Wade. white lights across. Ms. Wade, I know time my time out will talk fast. Little white lights across there could make it where you had wonderful dining for special events without blocking. My biggest hope is that we get the little details right through the end of whatever project is envisioned. Many hours were spent on the golf course sign, and at the last minute, the background material was changed to brown from a lighter material, and now the letters are almost unreadable. The devil's in the details. Project must be done meticulously and with constant staff inspection to assure the outcomes and maintenance must this be This is way. Thank you very much. We have Good many luck. people that are waiting. Please Good stop. Good luck. Keep Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, City Commissioners, Mr. Mayor, City Manager. First of all, I want to thank you, Mr. City Manager for anything you do for the Tarpo Springs and for Spring Ducks. I know, you try, I know you try to do the best. Mr. Vaticotti, 
Thank you. You're welcome again to the City Hall, like City Commissioner. And I hope this time, because I'm the, I think in this room, I'm the oldest one. I'm at Spandex for 30 years. And I know the change to the Spandex. But we have to remember something. Spandex is the Mediterranean city. I don't want to say it's the only Greek, but it's the Mediterranean city. And finally, I want to say again and again, this time we have city commissioner who has come all the time to the Spandak to see what the Spandak doing. I'm not talking about the, the old city, but I'm talking about the Spandaks. City, the mayor of the city should do the same thing. But sometimes we're talking too much. We don't do nothing, only promises. We don't have to keep promises. Tonight we are here not to forget to do it only promises. We have to do actions. And I'm going to again, thank you, city manager. Thank you, Mr. Vaticotti, you back to the city hall commissioner. And I don't see the other commissioners to come to Spandax to ask the, the business how to do it because they don't have any time. They don't care about. We're talking tonight to do actions, not to forget tomorrow, not because we walk outside tonight to say, that's okay, it's not okay. Thank you for your listen and my rest of the time I give to Mr. Papas. Thank you, Mr. Salivares. We are very glad that you're doing well from your injury. Just one Mr. Thing I Pappas, no, we have so many people they need to speak first. No, you can't do that. Please. <laughs> Can we have the next speaker, please? I'll be short. No, 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 no. My name's Debbie Thompson. I'm the manager at Catherine's Gift Shop right next to Mykonos at 628 Athens Street. Um, I do want to say thank you. You responded quickly this time, but you could do a better job with the flooding. Um, you responded, you're closing the road. I appreciate that. But I think sometimes you need to respond a little quicker. Um, the traffic there doesn't slow down when it rains. It doesn't slow down when it's flooding. They speed up. And I have seen this year more than a half a dozen people get splashed and they, they whole outfit is ruined. And they're here to visit this place. This is the best kept secret around. And it's ruined when you have locals and trucks that work there or people that are not even familiar with the streets, they just speed through there at 45 to 50 to see how high they can splash the water. And I think that needs to be looked into. And I understand from the police point that, you know, there's accidents when it's raining, there's other things that they have to attend to and stuff. And I'm, I'm trying to be understanding but when you're standing there and you see it go by and you see a lady in a nice dress, all of a sudden it's ruined. Where does she go to replace that dress? Or the elderly man trying to cross the street like I saw this year with a cane, trying to cross the street to go to Dimitri's and this big truck just comes right on through and almost hits him and he's leaning, you know, trying to get there. They don't care. You need to do more for that and everything. Um, the other thing that really irritates me is your homeless ambassador. And quite frankly, if it's not Mykonos, it's me cleaning up after him. And I know he has a home and place to go, 
And I know he doesn't really break any laws, but when people come from the upper end down and they see this man sprawled out on the bench, no shirt and shoes off, trash in the, on the sidewalk. And half the time, to be honest with you, he's going to the bathroom around here and we're tired of it. And you know, you got to do something. I can remember seven years ago when we had a homeless problem, there were people begging, they were going up for trying to get your money and the, and the visitors didn't like that at all. And all of a sudden it disappeared. But now you've got somebody that he sits on the bench, he'll be there at 11 o'clock, he'll be there at five o'clock, he sleeps, he waits for somebody to bring him something to eat and he'll cross the street and fall asleep right there next to Dimitri's. And here we are trying to be nice to this guy, but we can't, we can't keep running him off and run our businesses. So that's a major problem. If you're wanting to bring more people in and you've got families walking by and I've had, I can't tell you how many people come in and go, you need to call 911, there's a man passed out. And I look at him and I go, I'm sorry, that's Omar. He's not passed out, he's sleeping. So please, please see if you can do something about that. It would really help. And I've noticed this week alone, he has gone from the bench across the street to the diver supply and tried to sleep there. And he's been at Dimitri's trying to sleep in his little walker and then he's back on the bench. So, I mean, we've all tried to help him and everything, but that's a problem. So you need to, you know, see what you can do for that. And then my other thing is, is that I don't know if anybody has thought about it, but I've been to some historic towns and they have walking tours that are really interesting. And they bring out some facts that people don't even know. And so that might be something to think about in the near future, because I'm sure there's some qualified people here that are very proud of their Greek heritage, some retired sponge divers. Um, Mr. Pappas here, I mean, these guys know more than anybody else that they could train some people to do these walking tours for people. I'm sure they would love it. Thank you so much. Your time okay. is expired. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, Mike Eisner, 1515 Riverside Drive. This will be an easy request. I know we can't really do anything right now because we have the dredging that's coming up, but uh, um, I've heard a lot of people speaking about having dockage, at least for restaurants and for visiting. Right now, the dockage for boats is only on the north side. There's really no place to dock a boat or to enjoy the, you know, the stay in our beautiful town. So this is an easy request. I know it's not easy to do, but if we could keep that on the agenda to maybe put some T uh, docks out so that we can have places for boats to, you know, uh, dock. I also know that we have boats that are sitting, you know, sitting there doing nothing. They're not going out. Um, if they're related to sponges, of course, that something should be there. But if they're just sitting, taking up space, we could, you know, do something different with that. So I thank you for my time. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all ready? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Please. So Chrissy Kladakis, 301. Um, Banana Street. So good morning, good, good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, and Chief Cochin. Thank you for having me here. It's nice to be back in the auditorium. So I'd like to start off by saying that I'm a native of Charmin Springs and was lucky enough to have grown up with the sponge docks. It's incredibly unique, and I would like to give you some ideas on how to revitalize the area to attract tourists, locals, and families while preserving our Greek heritage. In my years of travel, I've been blessed to see many fascinating cities, their downtowns and historic districts, but I moved back to Tarpon because it was pretty amazing. So my first suggestion would be something like Pike's Place Market in Seattle, Washington. If you've never been, I suggest going. It's the coolest place and there's something for everyone. It's also, it sits on the water like the sponge docks. And when you first walk in, you're greeted with the fishermen and they're throwing their catch to the butcher on ice so it entertains the guests. 
To the right, you see all the beautiful and vibrant colors of the fresh cut flowers from the locals. And as you walk further, you're able to buy fresh organic produce from local farmers. As you get lost in the market, you have plenty of choices with restaurants, craft stores, spice stores, and shopping. They even have a theater where you can dine and watch a show, which would be perfect where the aquarium was. They have lodging, which I think the Old Pappas restaurant would be a perfect hotel. This would be a great long-term goal for the sponge docks. They have a website, it's called pikeplacemarket.org and they, are, they advertise the city's calendar and news and events. So you become part of the community, kind of like a local. I think in the short term, we should have farmers markets once or twice a month to allow us to buy fresh produce and eggs from local growers, maybe have buy plants from local residents also. This will entice locals to visit more. I know I've met some really great neighbors who love to watch it walk as much as I do, and we enjoy walking to the docks. I would also like to see more gluten-free vegetarian vegan options down there. The shift has to cater to, broader, to a broader market and give them options. Maybe the restaurants can have a separate gluten-free menu. This will allow them to advertise on gluten-free sites to help more foot traffic. My second suggestion would be to have a flea markets on the other weekends that we don't have the farmer's markets. We lost all of our flea markets in the area, the Wagon Wheel, Mighty Mouse, and the one off Gun Highway. Flea markets are fun, and during this pandemic, families are having a hard time entertaining their children. And a flea market would allow them to come spend the day with their family at the sponge docks and be budget friendly. And it would also have them go to the restaurants. My suggestion coincides with our Greek her heritage. Because when I visit my mom's city of Rhodes, the castle is the same way. Outdoor activities attract people and we should capitalize on, the, on people wanting to get out of the house while staying safe. But also I have a few other things that I added while I was sitting here. I wasn't aware there was a survey and I was just kind of wondering as property owners at the gateway of the sign, um, we never got an option to make a survey, to fill the survey out. And I agreed with the other speaker that said that is a really dangerous intersection. So I come down banana and I walk down downtown, go down the trail and I make a left, but I always tell my friends, let's cut through by where Mr. Suvlaki is and cross two lanes of roads, which I know it's probably jaywalking, but it's safer than doing the four way stop. So I think, and I just, I think we should improve that little area. We were just never given a survey to give our opinions. Um, we can also rent the parking lots, the vacant parking lots to the own, from the owners for the flea markets and maybe like the markets that'll actually help the residents, maybe help them pay their taxes and, and maybe make beautify that West End corner because that would be a great spot for a farmer's market. And you'll get a lot of traffic that's just doesn't even know about the sponge docks. Um, Google Cam is free. I'm not sure if y'all looked into Google Cam. It's kind of cool. New York has it. Like when you're in like Times Square, you can go online and see everybody down there. So not sure. Um, so the crossing, and also they have companies, bikes have companies where they set up them and you can rent them. And I think it'd be a cool bike city also, maybe put them down by downtown or the sponge docks because um, even drive, riding the bike to the beach by the bayous, that's a nice um, option. And, um, and I know we do have somebody that does a walking tour in Tarpon Springs, he's Greek, but I would really like to see some of these changes implemented because I know I would frequent it more if it catered to um, some of my likes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Do we have anybody else who would like to speak? Around, yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Jennifer Paniotti from Tarpon Strings Music at 600 Athens Street. And Rhea spoke for the group that we um, meet very often. So I'm very excited that you guys are looking at all of these options. But the one thing I did want to go over one more time, <clears throat> excuse me, was about clarifying the sound down at the docks because we're having a really hard time, excuse me, <clears throat> with having complaints and um, not really understanding what the um, ordinance is. So if we could have that clarification, that would be, <clears throat> excuse me, awesome, <clears throat> excuse me. point. We just need to know what the rules are so that we can adhere to them. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi, um, Eleni Christopoulos, 1402 Ford Avenue. I jotted down just a few notes because I was also not really uh, aware of all of this packet. Um, I'm going to reiterate what uh, Chrissy said that the property owners aren't properly communicated to. I was never see, I never saw a survey either about the um, gateway or any of the earlier meetings. So it would be nice to be not only the merchants that are running the businesses, but property owners need to also have an input as well. So just to ask that uh, there's better communication. Um, I know a lot of people mentioned the flooding. I'm just going to restate it because it's a huge problem for our stores. Um, the flooding is a constant issue. Uh, so just making that point as, as more solid as I know many people have uh, mentioned that already. Um, as far as these designs are concerned, um, I don't know who is going to be making that final decision. How is that final decision going to be made? Um, so I don't know if anybody can answer that question real quick. As far as the, the gateway signs, how is that going to actually be chosen? Um, so I'd you know, like more understanding or input into that. I think some of these initial are a little bit on the kitsch side. I don't think we need Greek keys and all of that stuff. I think something more subtle and uh, reminiscent of the actual sponge docks area would be nice for some of these more rustic um, things. I think just as a visual uh, <laughs> educator, I think some input from visually literate people would be great as well as far as making that decision. Um, also, as far as the parking is concerned, um, I know the Merchants Association would like a lot of free parking, but just need to mention that parking lots are businesses too and need to function um, and will be up and running soon. Um, also, someone else mentioned about the devil is in the details. I agree. There's little things around the docks that need to be cleaned up that I think would make a huge difference. So we can't overlook all the little stuff for the big stuff and expect it to look better. Okay. Um, also the bicycle idea, there's the scooters that are probably smaller that in downtown Tampa, I know they have, and in Athens and in everywhere around the world at this point that you can leave anywhere, you can pick up from anywhere and leave from anywhere. It might be a, a fun thing. And I know kids like to do that. It's a, you know, they can go up and down the sponge docks um, and just, you know, they pay on their phone and leave it somewhere else. So, and even to get around town. So maybe something that might be nice between downtown and the docks to be able to have people um, have access to that kind of transportation um, would be, I think, a, a fun thing to add to, to the area. Um, that's all I have for now. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Panayotikoulias, 595 Peninsula Avenue. I wanna focus on three different topics. First, the entrance sign. I personally think it all looks tacky, but it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what the business owners think, the property owners and the citizens uh, regarding it. There's not enough citizen engagement. That survey you sent out is not enough. Mayor, if you just take a picture and you ask the people on the Tarpon Springs community page on Facebook, you will get a ton of responses just to give you guys an idea. Um, and we don't want it to look like a glorified interstate overhang exit sign. So make sure it looks classy. Um, parking on the west side of the sponge docks. I think it's important to look at the Oak of course park. You can maybe run it out, lease it to get some more parking for the citizens. And the flooding. I mean, the flooding seems to be the biggest issue. Is it the check valves? Is the check valves being installed backwards? We really have no idea. We would like some uh, transparency throughout it all. And is it something where we're going to have to uplift the whole road like we did at Court Street to fix all the sewage and the plumbing underneath? Something needs to be considered because obviously we know there's a lot of flooding going on. So I just want to mention all that stuff. Oh, and uh, the ordinances. We just want to make sure there is transparency because no, no business needs to be bothered about the noise, about the sign structure. It's got to be consistent. And we need to make sure certain businesses aren't being picked on as opposed to other ones. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm David Gautzman from the Sponge Exchange. Uh, first of all, in defense of you guys, right in here you can see how many people were contacted about the sign. So I think you got a pretty good response and maybe more people did. So it was handed out. Uh, 
I also want to say I agree with Louie. I think I've been there 25 years. I have a store right in front of the uh, change, what you call it. It's very dark at night. Trees, the oak trees that you guys blow off every day, that I sweep off every day, they just keep on falling. The oak trees should be eliminated. They're not shaped. They're just all over the place. Beautiful palm trees with lights would help tremendously. I also think some lighting on the side where the boats are. When we have our festivals, we put the lights up across the, you know, swung, slung, sling from the poles. It lights it up, it looks nice. Some kind of permanent lights there would be great. Because I gotta tell you, I can't even see the water at night from my store. And I have the big store with the big round window up there and everything. So it would make it a lot, a lot more friendly for people to come down at night. Do I have to wear this? Uh, it just would enhance the beauty of the docks. Uh, what else? All these other, th these few other things about the uh, flea markets and the whatever, the fruit things and the vegetable gardens, they're great. I got to tell you something. I'm also president of the Merchants Association. We put on all the events, the first Fridays. We also have put on quite a few other events. The Seafood Festival is supposed to have been on this weekend. We all miss them, but we can't do it all. So if you suggest something, if you have people to do it, love to have it. And I'm sure you just bring it in front of the commissioners, they'll, they'll accept it, not accept it, whatever. But you need some people to run these things. So just saying it, what, what you want, there's some work involved in it because I don't think the city's gonna do it. It's not your job to. It's a private industry, just like she said, the parking, uh, parking is a private industry. You got to find someone to do it. That's about it. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, Sophia Zeronius. 848 Riverside Drive. I am uh, Andrea Salvers, his daughter. I am not at the docks every day or all day. I don't, I'm not in the restaurant business as much as I was in the past, but I do have a question about the night in the islands. It was such a great success. And I know that that was part of an endowment of the arts and a grant, but you know, I'm seeing Tampa and Dunedin and St. Pete and Safety Harbor, and they're taking their businesses and they're asking them, what if we close the street on a Saturday night? and put tables out. People are a lot more comfortable, at least some of them, eating out, outside. They wanna patronize the restaurants and they wanna go out, but they don't feel comfortable stepping in a restaurant yet. Why are we not doing that for our restaurants? I'm sure if you were to ask them or if you were to individually talk to them and say, look, it's gonna cost something. You need to have liability insurance. You need a special event permit. They'd be willing to do it. And maybe it's been discussed and I'm just not aware of it. So please correct me if I'm wrong. But I feel like something needs to get done to bring some more traffic down there, especially right now in the time that we're in. It's not going to get any better. And we're, we've lost a season. We potentially could lose another season. And something has to get done. And yes, some people have outside restaurant and outside seating, but not everybody does. And, you know, if the restaurants aren't busy, then the, get, the gift shops aren't staying open. If there's not enough lighting, people don't want to walk around outside at night. We have to have something at night. This downtown does an amazing job of it. There's lighting, people are outside at night. You go down to the docks and it's kind of become like that little step child that everybody forgot about. So I'd like to see something that we could do to take the night in the islands and possibly bring it back in a COVID friendly way. So. Thank you. Do we have any other uh, public comments? We do have a raised hand at the Zoom call. Yes. Wait, wait just a second. We have a person that wants to speak. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Afternoon, Go ahead, Mr. Sarkis. Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here. Sorry, I'm out of breath. I was running literally from the boatyard. I have paint on me. All right, so a couple of things. <clears throat> like distribution of information. Uh, when I was living in Tampa most recently, you can sign up for SMS text messaging and you get free text 
uh, whether it be environmental or flooding or that this meeting was happening right now or anything. Uh, you can, it's free to sign up, right? Uh, and you can also get emails from them too. Uh, someone had mentioned there being a liaison to the sponge docs. Um, if you look at project management in any particular way, there's lists called, you know, Kanban. To do, in progress, done. It would be nice if there was a city liaison and there was a monthly meeting or something like that with the merchants down there and saying, hey, this is what we have as our priorities, like through this meeting. This is what we're working on. This is where we can go online to review at what stage of the process we're in and then, and then, and then have a list of, look, look at how much we got done this year. And that's free uh, project management software available online all the time. Um, at the beginning of the meeting, you said, bring up stuff that you are supportive of. Uh, Ms. Uh, sorry, Amira loses. Um, palms, uplighting, I'm all for it. The flooding and the dredging definitely needs to get hammered out. Uh, parking. Um, so I buy an annual pass for parks and I leave it on my dashboard and I can go to any park. So it would be nice if you could kind of partner up with the parks <coughs> divisions of all these uh, different counties and just include that as part of your annual pass uh, if you're a local you might buy a park a park card which gains you access to all the parks in the state of florida but also if you pulled into a private parking lot there can be a tally sheet that says all right cool we're locals we want to go to tarpon springs we don't want to pay five bucks for parking the city marine parking is only like 15 minutes or whatever so just leave a little card on your dash and it does you know it grants you access to some parking so you can bring your, your family down there and eat some food. <clears throat> I asked a couple of people, hey, what do you think about the sponge socks? And they're like, sponge socks sucks. And I'm like, this breaks my heart. This is my, this is my town. I love it. And I said, well, why is that? And they said, well, you only need to see it once. There's no actual activities, activities down there. When you hear sponge capital of the world, you think it's the coolest thing, especially kids. But you get down there and really it's like tchotchke shops, right? Um, they said that there's not a really high end Greek food place that, that caters to like a really high end thing, which to me, that's not true. I feel like a lot of the Greek food's high end, um, not sufficient shade. It gets super hot. So the, um, sales idea for down the sidewalks would look super cool or the big palm trees also with the big canopy, um, art galleries, more art galleries down there, or some type of an attraction down there. Uh, I don't even know if the. Uh, aquarium buildings even still available. Um, I pitched <coughs> the idea of an art trail, an art trail um, to the uh, public art committee before it was a full committee and that we were just meeting uh, at the library. So I had to pull out of that because I had just opened Allstate. So this is going back to 2016, connecting alternate 19 to the art district in downtown St. Pete. So people can get a little map and it becomes an art trail and you start in Tarpon and you focus on little pieces of public art all the way down Alternate 19 into downtown St. Pete. So you can connect the murals from here and the murals to there. And it'll bring, it'll bring people from St. Pete up that wanna come see um, the public art all the way around. Um, the entry sign, we have sister cities. What if they had a similar welcome sign there? That would be, I think, pretty impactful. Uh, where in some of the sister cities, uh, in, in Calimnos or Gios or wherever, they have a similar uh, architectural style. That's my time. Thanks, guys. Can the speaker Thank you. identify himself, please? Oh, uh, Anthony Sarukas, 1055 North Nellis Avenue. Thank you. John Jennings, 2204 Pine Drive. I'm also chair of the Public Art Committee. And while I was sitting here and listening to all of the comments and questions and complaints, um, Rhea briefly me uh, mentioned a project that we finished, which are illuminated art boxes. They're solar powered. They are easily installed on existing light poles on the sponge docks. They're completed, they're in storage, we had a contest to determine uh, local artwork to be inserted in the boxes uh, that will create an illuminated art walk on the sponge docks. 
There are 15 of them. They will be grouped in groups of five. And I think they would answer a lot of the issues about lighting, art galleries, artwork, and would create a unique tourist attraction for the sponge docks. The problem is getting them installed. And I know that uh, the public works department is really swamped because of COVID and because of the holidays. But if anybody has any ideas or suggestions about how we could possibly expedite their installation, we'd love to hear it. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments? Ms. Munders, have we received any emails on this no, item? No emails, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Jump, do we have any attendees wishing to speak on this item? Yes, sir, we do have a raised hand. If you could please state your name and address for the record. My name is Jackie Albina, 778 Merlin's Court. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I wanted to reiterate what the other gentleman said about no dockage on the, anywhere along the sponge docks for day boats to come in and just dock for free and come up, have a meal, do some shopping. I am a boater in, the, in this area, but I've been down to Gulfport, Indian Rocks Beach, Clearwater has them on both sides of the ICW and as well as Dunedin has free space. And we seem to be the only city that doesn't have them in this area. And they are extremely well used in those other areas. So I would really love to see, we just redid the marina, it looks great, but all we have is paid for transient dockage. So I would like to see some so we can welcome people from other cities by water to our community. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jump, do you have anybody else that wishing to speak? If anyone else would like to speak over the Zoom call, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any other raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you so much. Again, I want to thank every one of you for providing us all this input, some very, very good information. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity and answer some of the things that uh, I think is very, very important to everybody. I hear parking over and over again. I think it's great. This is one of my goals and, and to have uh, city parking at the sponge ducks to better serve our visitors and our residents. Um, I presented this item to the uh, Board of Commissioners during the commission meeting and it has been placed on priority list. Mr. Lecours has been um, directed to uh, look for parking, any property that becomes available and or to buy or to lease. So uh, yes, we're trying to do that. I think this is very, very important. Uh, in regards to the entryway, that's in the process and uh, it will be on the agenda on uh, November 17th to be finalized. And if you please attend it so you can see the, the final product again, this is a public hearing so you can tell us again, your input. It's very important that we have uh, signs uh, to direct traffic to the sponge ducks from the highway and especially during the uh, special events that we have in downtown. Um, I discussed that with Mr. Lecouris and uh, uh, he is going to have temporary signs for now to be placed in different places to direct traffic to the sponge ducks when we have events. In regards to the signs on uh, US 19, uh, he's been working with the uh, FDOT to be able to relocate one sign that we have and I think the more signs that we have on 19 directly people, especially on the uh, Live Oak, where it's a direct route to the sponge docks, I think it's going to be very, very helpful. The next item that uh, we talked about, and I hear that many, many times, is the flooding on the sponge docks. Well, we have, we've been working on this issue for a long time. As you know, we completed uh, the first phase, I will call it, 
installed three check valves on the deck and needs to help the flooding when the, uh, during the high tide of the Enclo River. Well, that helps only when it's a high tide, but when the raining water, uh, it, it doesn't have a place to go. So we need to have a vault system to be installed. This is a very, very complicated system. And of course, it's going to be very expensive. And um, now that the election is over, uh, I will be visiting the state representatives and senators to get funding for this project. Once we secure the project, I mean, the, the funding, we're gonna have a series of, uh, of uh, meetings to get information and to everyone how this is going to happen because design is gonna to have to be done. Uh, this is again complicated and that's going to affect a lot of businesses. If we have the funding, we start this project because this is going to have to be placed on the deck and this boulevard, which is going to affect the businesses too. It's, it's going to be a very, very complicated and difficult project. Um, I, I love the, uh, uh, the recommendations they got from everybody in regards to landscaping and the beautification, the trees to be removed, uh, the oak trees and place the, uh, the palm trees that it's more, um, I guess it's more desirable to most people and it doesn't make any mess down on a, on a sidewalk. Uh, I think this is a very good information for uh, Mr. Lecour's funding is available to do this. Uh, another item that we talked about, it was uh, Mrs. Rossi, oh, here she is. You're talking about the grants. The grants are available and please take advantage of it. Uh, uh, if you please call Karen Lemons and apply for the grants, the money is available. At this time we have uh, 30 to $35,000 left avail uh, available in this, uh, in this fund. But I promise you, if we need more, if we have more people that are actually using this, I will work very hard to get more money for that because this is very important to beautify the sponge ducts. Uh, the, the speakers on the sponge ducts, this is an old idea that has been around for many, many years. Um, some of you that have been in the sponge ducts for many years, you probably remember that a conduit was actually installed during the time where uh, it was first, uh, uh, built and uh, they've never been used because some people do like to have different type of music. Well, with the new technology, uh, each speaker can be controlled. So if, if uh, the music's actually disturbing some of the customers, that can be controlled, I believe. Is that all right, Mr. Likoris? Yeah, we'll have an update. The 17th, we'll talk about where we are with all of that, so. so now technology is available. So each one of those speakers with his own address, it can be controlled individually so that would not disturb anybody. I think it's very nice to have music, especially during Christmas. And uh, it's bad that we can have a Christmas parade, but at least that we can do is bring the spirit back to, uh, to the sponge ducks. And uh, again, I'm very grateful to you for all the other ideas that you uh, uh, you, be, you know, you provide us. Uh, the um, public art committee is doing an excellent job in uh, bringing uh, uh, these art boxes down at the Spoins Ducks. I was actually there when they store the first one. And uh, I think it's, it's very unique and people like it very much. Um, I don't know if Mr. Pat was, did we cover the uh, question that you have because you wanted to speak again? Okay. Are the people that are involved down there? Please come to the podium just so we can be recording that. Seven or eight years ago, I don't remember when it was, when y'all had some grant money. It was a sizable amount of money. I think it was a million seven. And there was uh, uh, money spent on design and what have you. And then the city got a bunch of pushback from people that aren't even involved in the sponge dock area. I don't want to see that happen again. I want to move forward, get something done. Let's mm -hmm. get going because the last time this happened, it turned into a circus and everything just stopped. And I don't want to see that happen again. I think we need to listen to the landowners, the property owners and the merchants that are been down there for years. Some of them come and go, but there's a lot of people that have been down there for a long period of time. They should have the input of what's going to happen down there not people that don't aren't, aren't vested in, in in the sponge dock area that was it thank you 
I, uh, I violated my rule to let you talk the second time, but it was very helpful. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to go to the uh, commission comments, but for, before we do that, uh, my goal is once we discuss it here, the, uh, we're going to have the commission comments is to give direction to Mr. Lequeris, the city manager, to uh, uh, gather all the information that we received and for him to have uh, to present us with an action plan uh, so we can actually finalize and make sure that we don't make promises, but we actually execute in the things that you ask us to do. Vice Mayor Carr. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, also want to say thank you to the public uh, for the comments tonight. Uh, always enjoy hearing public comments. Um, just for clarification, uh, there were some uh, accus accusations made about commissioners and not being in the sponge docs. As you all know, you see us in the sponge docs. We care about the sponge docs. Just putting that out there multiple times. So um, a couple things I just want to talk about, and I think it's important, is the safety of pedestrians. And when you go to a place to visit, um, it's important that we have that access. Um, and crosswalks, I think, should be uh, one of the items that we have on our list. Uh, there's one crosswalk in the middle of the sponge docks, which I think is great. Um, but there probably should be a, some additional ones that we look at. So if we're looking for an actionable item, I would say crosswalks would be on the, um, let's say, west of the roundabout. Um, East of the roundabout, closer maybe to Holos, this needs to be, there might be some there, but they need to be really brought out. Um, there's one in the middle by the sponge exchange, I believe, and then there needs to be one that's, um, the one that's I think by um, Sponge Diver Supply. We really need to bring some more attention to these. And then if there's a, another opportunity um, closer to the marina and how we could also do something at Ultra 19 to uh, work with the county and state in that area. Um, from a comment standpoint, I, I just, from a town hall, I think it was a great conversation that, that we've had tonight. Um, there's some items that, let me go back to the mayor and ask, what do we, what's the objective here? Do we want to list out an objective tonight or we want to well, come back and- What I would like to see is that we actually um, uh, gather as much information as we can and ask Mr. Lequeurs to go ahead, give direction to Mr. Lequeurs to go ahead and uh, gather all the information and create an action plan on the items that we need to get done. And some of the items are already working on. So, and then we need to make sure that we communicate that to everyone at the sponge docks and put that on their website. So everyone in the city has that information. That's my, uh, that's my goal. On that. Okay. Um, just real quick, uh, the palm trees versus oak trees. I understand it. The lighting's important. Um, closure of the streets for different, of, like a restaurant to go out into the streets. I understand that. Um, a lot of the ideas were more private business um, ideas as well. And so as merchants and other private businesses, these are opportunities that you all can do and do yourselves that the city isn't necessarily responsible or would be involved with. Um, but there's a lot of things in here that the city has done from the improvements that you can see in your backup, uh, which I think that everyone should be really proud about. Um, and there's a significant amount of time that the city is putting behind this as well to do, to enhance the sponge docks. Um, the SMS text messaging, I thought was a great idea. Connecting the Tarpon Springs to other Pinellas County cities is a good idea. And then um, if I could ask the city manager, what is the status with the solar panel boxes? Is that something we could have installed before Thanksgiving? <clears throat> No, the biggest problem besides work, we, we've tried several things um, and we're still working on to get them up faster. Um, we tried to see if we could contract somebody to assist us in putting those up. Um, there is nobody available. We tried to find some skilled workers that would be able to go up there and hang those. Um, that hasn't worked, but uh, we'll be meeting, uh, I think Wednesday, um, to try to come up with a plan to rush what we can do, it may take overtime or may, but with all the, especially with the holidays and all the things we're doing now, we just, we just don't have the manpower. But again, we've got a meeting Wednesday. We have heard the concerns from several, from the art committee. And uh, again, this is something, um, 
that we really want up because it will enhance and do all the things. So hopefully by the end of the meet or by the meeting, the 17th, hopefully we'll have something in mind to try to rush that and move that along and uh, get that going. But we've, we've been working on several different avenues, hitting dead ends. And, uh, um, but can but, we just do like one a week, you think? Is that would that be something that we could fit in somewhere? And well, we could do year? something like that. We really want to try to find a way to move those along and get those moving. Mm -hmm. Um, it may not be all of them, um, but in more of a grouping, we can do okay. so. Ho hopefully, again, after Wednesday's meeting, we'll have information. Several of these other things involved with the sponge docs is on that 17th meeting. Hopefully, we can bring you back a plan, and hopefully, it's a plan that gets those boxes up sooner than later because I think they're very important to a lot of the things we've talked about here. So, we're going to do everything uh, humanly possible to try to move those up and uh, get those up. Okay. I, I think it's important to address that. Um, I also think it's important to come back and have the, the staff with a list. I mean, it's difficult to go off of just comments tonight. Um, one of the things that I, I struggle with when I'm down at the sponge docks is the hawkers, uh, the people that are coming up to you to try to hawk and they're screaming or whatever about going on a boat trip or seeing dolphins or harassing tourists. Um, that's something I, I find to be distasteful and watching uh, people get harassed. So I would hope that's on the city's list to do some more enforcement in that area as well. Um, but ultimately, I think it would be best for the city staff to come back um, with some of these items and we could give a better direction um, labeled out. Uh, one thing I do want, think is important too is to talk about um, the sound ordinances so the businesses understand what it is uh, and we're all on the same page. I've heard that complaint a couple of times too. So thank you. Thank you. Commission Chair Pay. Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you all for being here. It's been a, probably like six or eight months since we've sat in this auditorium. So uh, seeing this dais tonight is the first time for me. So I'm, I'm actually excited about that. I don't know if y'all noticed, but this is a brand new dais. I don't think this, I don't think this board's ever sat at it except for tonight. Yeah. So for us, that's a big deal. Um, so thanks for being here. I also think the, the conversation and the comments that were made tonight and some of the backup that was supplied to us um, are all productive things for the most part. And I think it's, you know, it's definitely not a secret that within this community, we have a lot of talented people who are capable of, of passing forward good ideas and a lot of talent on this commission in itself. Um, a lot of visionaries, it, it really comes down to a matter of implementation, right? So that's one of the things that I think that this commission is really concerned with is a matter of actually getting things done. Um, so that that's our goal is to actually get some of these things done that we've been talking about not only some things that we've been talking about for a while but also the new things that have been discussed tonight and uh, will hopefully continue to be discussed um, as our time up here goes on and on um, so some of the things that i think i highlighted and jotted down and also found in the backup that were of of interest i'll give some feedback to you on um, for me and, and i'm just going down the list this is not a matter of priority um, but for me the parking in the sponge docks um, it's a little bit of a sticking, a sticking note for me because number one, you do have this, this area of private enterprise, right, which is making money on the sponge docks. But above and beyond that for me is when I see giant waterfront parking lots, I don't really, I don't feel that there's naturally a need for more parking, given that some of the most valuable land in the given area is waterfront parking lots. So for me, I feel like when you start to see some of those areas get redeveloped, um, and you not have as much parking at that point in time, maybe the parking will become a little bit more of a priority for me personally. Um, I do find value in public parking lots. I do think that there, there is probably a need there and that's the, biggest, uh, that's the biggest point that I can side with as it relates to parking in the sponge docks is the difference between public parking and private parking. Not necessarily the need for more parking, but the difference between public parking and private parking. Um, the webcam, I think, is a great idea. Um, I think that, you know, all the webcams that I know of and know people that check in on webcams, that's pretty cool, um, especially if you see a live time, uh, beautiful sunset and you think, oh, let me run down to the docks because I can see it now since I know it's happening or just what's going on in the sponge docks and people checking in. And you can literally see it from around the world. So I think at a, a relatively low cost, that's something that's pretty cool that we could uh, hook up to our, our web link and, and really build on from there. Um, the entry sign, something that I've been talking about for a long time and really goes back to the, the sponge docks movement that we had a few years ago that we talked about. 
that wasn't like an entirely bad plan. There were, there were aspects of that plan that I think a lot of people within the community felt strongly that it was a good thing. Um, and basically what we did, being that I was on the commission when this happened, is after, after that went up in flames, we kind of dra dropped back and said, okay, well, what are the areas uh, that we can move on right away that were areas within the community that people collectively thought were a good thing? Um, and at that point in time, it was landscaping, it was entry, it was uh, more lighting, et cetera. Really the bigger components are, are some of the things that killed the deal, <laughs> excuse me. Um, and because I mentioned the landscaping, uh, as a result of us trying to drop back and punt, the landscaping that you see along uh, the right-of-ways, including the parking areas and you know, really the entire sponge docks, uh, we were able to come up with uh, landscape easements so the landscaping that's in front of the parking lots, for example, that's on private property, but we were able to obtain an easement with the property owner to allow us to plant and maintain uh, the landscape along those areas. No secret, forever and a day I have told Mr. Pappas, no, I like the oak trees. I like the oak trees. They provide shade, this, that, and the other thing. But I'll tell you that now a lot of time has gone by, and we did, when we did that, do that replanting, we did replant a lot of palm trees, and I think that the palm trees really look nicely along the waterfront, and uh, I think now would probably be the time to, to take action on that and replant more palm trees and look to find other uh, areas to offer shade, which was really my biggest issue, or not issue, but my biggest hesitation in removing the oak trees was the, the desire to try and provide shade to people down on the docks. Um, so I would, I would definitely be open to bigger, bigger palm trees that actually cast uh, some shade within a small canopy. Um, the, just because, just to go back to the entry sign for a minute, um, what was provided in the backup to me, I'll just say for the record, and I know that we're gonna come back to this on the 17th, but option one, which was provided, I think I like the best. Um, and going back and reading the survey results, you can see that most of the, of the number one items that were listed or found in the survey are contained within that number one rendering, that first drawing, which is brick bases uh, uh, with the tarpon on a historic tarpon spring sponge docks, uh, illumination on the top and landscape on the bottom. So for me, I think that's a very classy look and ultimately underneath a lot of the uh, new exterior facades in the sponge docks, you'll go back, you'll see there's original brick uh, facades and brick walls. So I feel like the brick is a very natural uh, material. Um, an idea that has been kind of talked about that was not discussed tonight is uh, the possibility to have a new um, coastal uh, warning tower, which really is just, you know, angle iron kind of welded together, but could be a really cool um, feature to the sponge docks, I think, and you could illuminate that and just something to build on. Um, lighting up the city dock is a great idea. Um, and I know that we have some sensitivities in the community with light pollution, um, but I think that we could try and find a way around that and really, I mean, ultimately the working waterfront is the working waterfront, right? So we wanna be able to see that, including at the nighttime. And I think that that's something that is, again, is an easy fix. It's just a matter of us, you know, all agreeing on it and implementing it. Um, so I, I support that. Um, I made a big push uh, a few years ago for the marina, the city marina to become uh, Charter Row again. When I was growing up, obviously Pap's restaurant was next door and was booming, but the city marina, like that was Charter Row. I mean, that's where people, you could see people cleaning fish and, you know, there was people standing there to get their fish and the boats are going in and out. And I think that's really cool. And at a certain point that kind of went away and it was more sailboats and, you know, boats that didn't move. And I think that we're back to having a charter row now, which is really cool. Um, and we'll bring residents and, and adds an attraction element to the sponge docks. But when I was down there the other day, there's no benches for people to sit. And it's not just for anybody, but I mean, if a charter captain's fortunate enough to get a charter off the street and the next day he takes some fishing and they just crush the fish, there's nobody for anybody to stand. I mean, anybody, there's no room for anybody to sit and you know hang out while their fish are being cleaned take a photo etc so i think that that's really important that we get some benches down there uh, at the city marina it looks fabulous other than that um it was mentioned and this is something that i've heard for a long time that you know we, we know what our mickey mouse is and that's a, a shout out to mr Blairs, but we know what our mickey mouse is we know that it's the sponge docks and the working boats and it doesn't just have to be uh, sponge boats. It can be other working commercial boats, which I think is important. And we don't want that to go anywhere. But 
and, and, and this could exist today as it relates to their permit to park there. But if your boat is not a commercial boat and you don't go fish and you don't go catch sponge or anything like that, then your boat's got to go, in my opinion. So whatever we need to do, this is just me talking, but whatever we need to do for our permit process for those commercial boats to park there, they need to prove via receipts or whatever that they're not only harvesting things from the sea, but they're also selling them. So that's something that I think that we should look at as a commission. Um, I think the zero curb in front of the sponge exchange going, uh, you know, to the, to the working dock, I think is a good idea. I thought that that was a good idea years ago when we talked about it. And again, that's a relatively easy deal. So if we can agree on that, then I think we should, you know, at a certain point, start making moves, you know, execute the things that are easiest to do and then go to the matters of next priority. Um, the better crosswalk at Alt 19 and Live Oak, I thought was a great idea. Um, and we'll, and also just that corner in general. Um, I know that our hands are tied to a degree because it's owned privately. Um, and that's fine. And hopefully one day we do see a, a great redevelopment project there. Um, but in the meantime, I think that we could definitely spruce up that corner and add, uh, add that crosswalk. Um, as it relates to the beautification grants, um, those have worked well throughout the city. Um, I understand that we went through the pandemic, but my thinking is, is in the downtown area, we knew we identified, okay, what, what do we want to see down here more? We, we'd like to see more diversity in terms of uh, restaurants or cafes or breweries. So it wasn't just a beautification grant. It was also, okay, we have a beautification grant. We have a side grant. What do we, let's do another grant. And this is a business recruitment grant. So if we can think about what are some of the things that we would like to see in the sponge docks, maybe less retail, you know, maybe we want to see less gift shops or, you know, to use other people's words, tchotchke or whatever. So if we can identify what we think would be better in the sponge docks, maybe we can better shape that grant that we already have in place and try and channel those dollars to things that uh, we think we'd really like to see versus just saying, hey, you know, and it's still a good thing. Don't, be, get, don't get me wrong, but versus just saying, hey, fix up your building and we're going to match your funds. Let's actually go back to the other model, which is this is what we want to see. If you do it, we'll help you. Um, and then uh, the speakers on the docks, I didn't touch on, but I think that that's a great idea. Um, and I like, like the mayor said, the ability to, to control each speaker um, in the event that, you know, one speaker is too loud for a business or is classing too much or they have live music and you don't want the, the other music playing. Um, the flooding on the docks, you know, that's probably one of the hardest things to address, uh, but we've taken measures to try and start working on that uh, short of, of actually starting the vault construction. Um, that's about it for me right now, uh, y'all, but I appreciate y'all coming and we'll keep on doing our best. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to thank everybody else uh, for coming tonight, making your voices heard. It's one thing to just complain about stuff not getting done. It's another thing to march down to City Hall during a pandemic and, and let us know how you feel. So I really appreciate you guys coming out. Um, obviously, we're going to work with staff to get you the best results we can. Um, as far as communication goes, please know that me and I, I think I speak for the board here and that you can call us, email us anytime, day or night. It doesn't matter. Um, as far as town halls go, I don't want to feel like, you know, the only time you can come to us with new ideas or initiatives on the docks or, you know, every nine months that we have a town hall. Uh, I got business cards. My cell phone's given out to everybody. So if you guys want to call me, feel free to call me. Um, as far as some of the ideas we heard tonight, I think everything was constructive. So I really appreciate that. I think it's all stuff that we can work towards. Um, specifically the, the beautification aspects. I think that's some really, um, you know, low hanging fruit. I think it's easy for us to do. I think a lot of it comes down to pressure washing, getting in new, uh, you know, planters down there, matching with, with seasonal displays better than just, you know, maybe some aluminum reefs. So absolutely beautification stuff is, is easy. And I think that's within, you know, within our grasp over the next few weeks um, to continue to work on. Um, a couple other things that I think could probably be done overnight is the clarification of the sign and noise ordinances. I know a couple of you just asked for some clarification on that. I think that's something that staff can put together tomorrow, send an email out maybe to uh, the committee and they can disperse it from there just to kind of clarify what's coming. And I know we do have some agenda items on the horizon that are going to kind of address, um, you know, at least the signage down there. But as that issue moves forward, I think that's really easy just for staff to put out there to disperse to everybody. Here's what it looks like. Here's what it actually is. Um, so you guys have a little bit of uh, awareness as to that. 
Um, as far as the speakers go, I, I do like the idea as well. I just really want to make sure that it doesn't hinder <laughs> live music on the docks and I don't want it to bother businesses that would rather play their own music or, hey, I have somebody coming to play music at eight o'clock and then I got Christmas music going on right in my one ear and then I have, you know, some classical music going on in my right ear. So I really like the idea that they're going to be, um, I guess, individually modded to the point where people can um, change them if they want to change them. So I really like that, but that's definitely something to be aware of. Uh, as far as the grants go, I'm always for supporting our, our grant increases. I know that's something we did in the budget this year. Um, but really th those empower the businesses because we don't make the sponge docks great. You guys make the sponge docks great. And the more responsibility that we can leave to you and just help you craft your vision. Um, I'm always for that. So I definitely want to keep using those grants, empowering those grants to help you, uh, the art box installation, absolutely going to work with staff to try to expedite that process because um, I know our pack works really hard and I, I hate to see it just sit in storage. Um, aside from that, I, I think, you know, as far as the flooding goes, the dredging goes, that's all larger picture stuff that we're working towards. Uh, but again, feel free to reach out to me, our mayor, vice mayor, any other commissioners. Uh, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Next is... Commission Vaticurus. Commission Vaticurus, she was elected in March and he became a commissioner in April. Actually, tonight is his first meeting in the City Hall. Thank you, Mayor. I'd, I'd like to start off with getting some clarification. Um, uh, City Manager LaCourse, I, I see your tally here on the list that things has been done is from 2015 to present. I know on the grants, um, we had rollovers in the CRA, but I don't recall anything for the sponge docks in this budget. Do we have money in this year in the, for the facade grants for the sponge yes, docks? Yes, their money rolled over also. And you might see it in the budget resolution that's coming up from Ron Herring, but that, that money does, does uh, go over to this so year. So we can, we can update this list to reflect yes. that? Yes. Okay. Um, the art boxes, um, I know I've heard that there was some difficulty finding, uh, is it the equipment or is it the personnel? It's the labor. The equipment. Labor. The labor. Yes. We can't um, reach out to Pinellas County, maybe their signalization crew or something and, and see if somebody's willing to work overtime or something. I think that's one of the ideas we're going to be talking about because we tried from the, for business, try to get, uh, uh, companies to help us, but companies, uh, uh, even with COVID, the companies are busy. We even tried to find some skilled workers that could hang those things with the different temp agencies and other agencies. And that, so we're moving back to that, either some help maybe from a city, or we just have to work on an overtime schedule and do it. But that was our attempt to do, to try to find somebody to contract with and right. come in and assist us. But but this market now, they're, they're not available. We tried everywhere, so. Right, well, I know Pinellas County, their signalization crew is a, uh, basically they're experienced with this type of work of mounting things like this on poles and things. So I don't think that would be an issue. And I know they've been very helpful in the past when we've needed some extra help um, with some of the traffic lights on, on uh, Riverside as an example, they've come in and helped the city crews install those for us and everything. So. Maybe we can get something done. And, and again, I'm hoping to bring you that solution on the 17th, the answer to yeah. that. So. All right. Um, uh, parking. I, I think the parking that I've, I've heard this, um, I'd spent a lot of time with the sponge docks merchants. The parking is not whether it's available or it's not available. It's cheap parking that's needed. I think that many of the issues have been during these special events, the price of the parking lots have mysteriously increased to, 10 to $15 a day. And that seems problematic with getting people at these special events. And um, I, I, I wanna make sure that $100,000 that we budgeted for parking lots, rent or purchase or anything, does that apply to the sponge docks area as well? No, sir, that's the CRA. Right. So we really don't have any money in the budget for the sort of things that we talked about this evening for leasing or renting parking and subsidizing at the sponge docks. Is that correct? Budgeted, but if an opportunity comes up, we'd have to come back to you and see if we could find the money, find or, the money. or get it from somewhere else. Yeah, it was like finding the money. <laughs> All right. Um, that's fine. And, and we really 
because it's not budgeted, we really don't have any authorization for you to do this, or are you going to do it based on what you're hearing tonight? Yeah, I, I, I thought when we talked about the different parking from the priority and stuff that I'll, I would be on the lookout for anything that became available in that area and then bring that back to you if something became available to see how you wanted to proceed. I, I know there's some parking um, just to the um, east of Athens Street with huge amounts of vacant parking. It's privately owned. It really doesn't do anything. It just sits there. I know the gentleman that owns it, um, I know he's offered the property during special events and things of that nature. He may be willing to um, lease or do something with that property. The chart that you did showing the vacant properties for um, the downtown area, is there something that can be done for the sponge docks area to yes, show what okay. might be available? Yeah. I think that would be very helpful for everybody to see. Um, and maybe we could do that on the 17th yes, as part we'll of this whole thing. Okay. The, um, the webcam, uh, <laughs> we're, we're, right now we're just planning on one webcam. Is that correct? We're, we're doing a test on the one, but you know, they're, they're so inexpensive in the right. process as we test the one, it's not going to be, it's not going to be very hard. We're just testing this one to see if that's what we want. But, um, we will be telling you when we, when we do an right. IT, right. when IT does it the 17th, that there's the capability to do these because it's not an expense, it's an in-house thing to do and very easy with our, our IT talents, and we, we will be able to expand that easily. This is the first okay. test one. I, yeah, I want to be fair to the sponge docks uh, merchants from one end of Dodecan East to the other, especially down at the West End um, around West uh, Rusty Bellies. That's a very uh, kind of a rustic area as well as far as a working waterfront. And quite frankly, that's when it's going to distinguish us from some of the beach communities to the south of us. So I, I'm glad to hear that. Um, The sound ordinance, uh, that's another thing that I've heard quite a bit of, I don't want to call it complaints, but confusion over. I know that with every special event that's taken place and even, even non or local special events, there's one or two people that um, call the police and complain about that. And I, I think it's always been a matter of education, not just for the people that are playing the music, but the, the people that are making the complaints. Maybe they would complain anyway, but that's their right to do. But I think it's extremely important to, um, uh, for uh, the police officers when, if they do visit the person making the complaint, make sure they understand um, what, kind of, what kind of action they would get rather than just simply calling, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I think the music can go to a certain period of time at night and that sort of thing. And I know there's special accommodations given to the uh, uh, special events. And if I'm not mistaken, we used decibel meters in the past. And there was some, with, when we had some real issues at the sponge docks, uh, the police department would have a decimal meter and take measurements. Maybe we still do have that, I don't know. But I, I think that needs to be thoroughly explained uh, for them. Um, the speaker system, um, I, I know they're out to bid right now, but and I saw somewhat of a, uh, not so much a detailed plan, but uh, specific in terms of the numbers and the distance spacing. Did we get some professional help for that or, or is that something? That, that's just rough draft form. Um, that, that's not a fine, that's just to show you how they could work. Um, we'll, we'll know from the, and again, we'll have more from your 17th, but that's us just kind of spacing the number and stuff along there, but it's just a real rooted, rudimentary okay. um, example to show but, what what the possibilities are. But we're out to bid on it right now, right? It's the speakers, yes. Um, does that bid include some assistance or consultation to help us balance the system? Or it's just for the equipment? I think it's just for the equipment. Okay. I think that's going to be very important, especially based on what the mayor was talking about. Um, the whole idea behind, behind these distributed systems that you could be under the speaker or in between two speakers and the volume level is not going to be that much different so that you can actually tone it down to where it, it's just for the people on the street that they can hear. And also um, we, we talked about some live music. I don't think that was talked about a whole lot, but perhaps um, that would be able to accommodate 
uh, the live music, hopefully, I'm sure it would be quiet type instrumental music that would be played down at the sponge docks and that could be live streamed. And also that uh, particular um, uh, music. And I, I know that whole process has to be laid out as far as who selects the music and the whole thing and the timing and when it starts and when it shuts down. But that could also be part of the super link as well. Um, people could be able to tune into the music that's actually being played at the sponge docks. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'll have more to say about the super link, but that's going to be on the 17th to discuss in more detail. Yes. Okay. The gateway sign, um, I, I think that they're all nice concepts. Um, I, I really, um, I'm not sure how the commission feels about it. You know, for example, the one little pet peeve I have is I don't like tarpons facing down. Um, I think they should be leaping up in the air rather than taking a nosedive somewhere. <laughs> and, and, um, and, and, but nevertheless, the overall design, I, I think it maybe it would be okay for the commission to pick three designs or something, but then maybe float those to the people that are down there and, and have a survey uh, and let them select and, and look at what the look uh, as far as a result of what the majority um, would prefer as far as a gateway sign. I, I think we, in the past, historically, I've been out there watching, but we've always struggled over the designs of signs and we usually have two or three um, meetings before we finally have something. And then all, ultimately, for example, the golf court sign, there was a, a change in the material um, as they were constructing it. And I've gotten a couple of comments about the golf course sign it wasn't all that great, but, but nevertheless, they are what they are at this point. But the gateway sign, I think need, we need to take care with, with that and make sure that uh, whatever we have as far as priorities um, and in the design, we don't just fix on one, but we take it uh, to the um, uh, back to the residents. From my perspective, I'm not a big, I, I don't know. I mean, Commissioner Terrapani, you mentioned brick at the sponge docks. Where, where would that be? I, I don't. I mean, if you turn on Athens Street, that entire yellow brick, that entire building's brick. It is painted brick. Yeah, I'm just saying, I mean, originally when they were built, they were built out of brick. They may be painted now, but all the building, I mean, the sponge exchange, half of the sponge exchange is brick. Okay. Well, that's my point. I think a lot of this stuff is a point of discussion. I, when I think of the Dota Canese Islands, I think of white, I think of, um, of uh, plaster, I, I see uh, uh, that sort of thing, which I think a couple of them are in there. I know we had some discussion of natural um, brick. I, I saw the, the blue um, uh, look like um, um, kind of almost like a subway tile, shiny. That is kind of a nice blue. I mean, I don't, my point to you is I am not a sign designer or a commercial or industrial art, uh, artist. And, and I think I think it's good, but I, I still think in order to make sure we get it right, that other people need to be involved in this as well. But of course, that's a, up to the commission. We can discuss that later. Uh, the lighting, I think you've heard uh, many residents this evening talk about the lighting. We just need to focus on that. I, um, I didn't see that on our list, uh, city manager at LaCourse, as far as um, some of these. Is it on here? I don't recall seeing specifically um, more of uh, lighting for pedestrians and things of that nature. We don't have that plan yet because we wanted to hear this meeting and hear the different things and then bring it up to okay. the commission. On the we so, knew we knew so, from the February meeting lighting was yeah, going to be a and, serious issue. So and to let you know, this commission did budget for that. A lot of these things that you talked about in the February 28th meeting, even though we didn't have a meeting here, this city commission um, budgeted for it. And lighting is one of the things that the money is budgeted for. We just have to come up with what you and the commission want on it. But we do right. have the money there for that, the gateway sign, the, um, the um, sound system, all that was fun, despite not having this town hall with you from the results of what the commission heard and our meeting the 28th, the money was placed there to do it. So we're not sitting here talking and then, then okay, now we got to find budget money. This commission already budgeted in this budget right now. Okay. Um I, I recall we budgeted lighting and it seems to be a very high priority. And I do know that there's a great interest among the sponge docks businesses to, to, in, to increase the nighttime activity at the sponge docks. That's one of the purposes of the music system and the whole thing. 
Uh, so I, I, I'd like for us to work that, on that a little harder and I'll, I'll be following up on this. I think the day dockage, um, this is not a new idea. I can tell you it, it dates back to 25 years um, um, where, you know, there's been some boats that have been there um, claiming to be sponge boats and ultimately we wind up getting cross-threaded with the, uh, uh, the, sponge, the, the sponge boats that are, are there. And the only thing I want to say, I, I, I'd like to be careful and not wind up with just nothing there. And that was always a problem. One of the attractions of the sponge docks is to actually have boats there, not just a riverfront with nothing there. And day visitors are good, but I would think that maybe the prime real estate would not be the best place for them, maybe off to the side somewhere. I don't know, uh, but maybe, maybe that would be something that we need to talk about. Um, I do know that when we had a shortage of sponge boats, we actually have more sponge boats now than we did in the past. Um, and, and when the, the shrimping industry was more active, we had a lot of sh uh, shrimp boats on this side of the river, but for whatever reason, they were moved out uh, just because of, of, I guess, some issues perhaps with the, some of the shrimpers and things like that. But that's actually what got Paul's shrimp house put on the map was the, the shrimpers and that, that people wanting to go down and see these sort of things, very similar to what you had in Key West. So um, the, the crosswalks, I, I, I'm okay with that, but I, I know people down there, I'm down there a lot, they cross the street where they want to cross the street. And, and I, I think it's good to put the crosswalks in there but I think the traffic moderation is, is gonna be key that we keep the speed limit down so we don't have anyone hit by a car. And I think that the uh, crosswalks are good, but um, I, I just think I, I don't wanna wind up taking away the ability for people to cross the street. That's all part of the, the ambiance of the sponge docks. It's just a very relaxed, casual atmosphere that people can go from one side of the road to the other Obviously, they've got to look both ways. And I think for the most part, uh, residents have been pretty good about that because they recognize that there's a lot of people down there, people stumbling off the curb into the lanes and that sort of thing. So I, I think the idea of crosswalks is okay, but, but not to the extent that we create something that is very rigid and we, we kind of lose that comfort that we have at the sponge talks. Um, the one thing we didn't touch about tonight, um, and, and um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot here. There's a lot of things that the um, city manager town hall meeting brought back. There's a lot of things that uh, were approved in the budget. Um, we had a, a planning and um, uh, actually long range, but a visioning meeting as well, a uh, workshop not too long ago. Uh, we really need to establish priorities and, and what we're looking to do at the sponge docks, what the vision is for the sponge docks, just as much as what this vision is for the city. And I really think that we need to have that. I mean, I, I just, it's, it's difficult for me to figure out to, to determine how you do some of these important things without having a vision of, of of what we want the sponge docks to be, which also should establish what our priorities are. So there was nothing discussed tonight about that. I still think that there's a big disconnect between us here and the people out there. I think they all had excellent ideas. I think we are very accommodating to implement those ideas, but I still don't know how is that gonna be done. And I'd rather, rather than doing it randomly or, or just do the easy things first and we'll take the harder things later, there ought to be some uh, concerted effort to establish priorities. And which leads us to the next step of um, uh, a city liaison, preferably somebody from the staff who would meet with uh, merchants on a day-to-day -day basis and hopefully um, bring start or begin establishing those priorities and, and listen to the uh, residents. I think uh, several of them had ideas specifically. Um, I think one gentleman got up there, um, uh, David, I know he got up there and, and he said, okay, these, some of these are good ideas, but believe me, they're, they're just not going to work down here. We've heard them before. So I think that's the kind of feedback we need to get back uh, to us to, to prioritize a lot of these things because 
Mayor, the, the flooding down at the sponge docks, I know we're working on, on uh, Dodecanese in Athens, but until we cure the flooding at Hope um, and also Roosevelt, we won't complete the flooding down there until that's done as well. Well, actually, uh, um, as you know, that we finished the, uh, uh, the first part, which was installing the, uh, the check valve. That part has been completed. We did have some uh, challenges because some of those check valves didn't work properly. They got it fixed. But the next thing now is the, uh, the vault system that we talked about. Now that the uh, election is over, I will be visiting the uh, state representatives and the senators trying to get funding for it so we can uh, get it going. Okay, um, and that's very important. I know we're waiting for the, the uh, seawall at Hope Street to be repaired. I know that there was some representation by the city staff that they were going to take uh, some sea level uh, mitigation um, initiatives to incorporate into the design. I'm very, um, I'm looking forward to see what those are going to be. So I guess we'll be getting that back pretty soon. I think that's, is that out to bid now or that design is com getting no, completed right that, now? That, that's coming to you on the 17th, the report and stuff from them is coming to you for the 17th. Uh, to the 17th? Yes. Okay. Is that for, uh, I didn't quite hear you because you're muffled there, but the sea, the sea walls survey and, and what you're talking about, that's on the agenda for, it was on the agenda um, in October, but we didn't have a full board um, and the consultant couldn't be, be there tomorrow night, but they will be there the 17th to talk about that. Okay. All right. And then that 17th, we've got the Army Corps people there as well. Is that still on for the 17th or is that a different date? Trying to think if it's remember we had a, a, yes. a meeting with the Army Corps of Engineers. That's important for people here that are interested in the uh, the dredge. I believe so because I know I know it was going back and forth to get them there between the tenth and the seventeenth. I've been with agendas. I'm not quite sure, but if it's not on tomorrow night's agenda, it's on the seventeenth. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's it, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lacours. Uh, what I would like to see again is to have a. Uh, uh, if you create, if you provide us with an action plan and some of the items are already in the process, if you are uh, doing such a, you know, uh, like an Excel type uh, spreadsheet and let us know exactly what. No, this is a great follow up from our meeting in February and uh, okay. I will be starting tomorrow putting that together. And, and some of the, uh, some of the projects have already been uh, uh, funded, they're already been, they are in a budget that the, and you uh, identify the ones that actually need to be uh, funded so we can have uh, uh, an extra plan and, and you know, uh, schedule a scene where that will take place. Mm -hmm. And I would like to have a, uh, a follow up to let everybody know, uh, not only the, uh, the people from the sponge docks, the, uh, the property owners and the business owners, but every person in Tarp Springs to know exactly what are we doing with the sponge docks, make sure that all that information goes on the, uh, on the website. Yes, and we just confirmed it is the 17th when the Army Corps is going to be here. Okay. If we have uh, no other comments, uh, again, I would like to thank everyone for being here tonight, and I thank everyone who uh, is watching the, uh, uh, the meeting online and uh, for providing, thank you again for providing your input and your recommendations are very, very helpful. Sponge Ducks is very, very important, not only to our culture, but to our local economy. So thank you so much. Well, that concludes the... Uh, the special session agenda tonight. And we're gonna to go to our staff comments. Uh, Police Chief, do you have anything you wanna share with us? No comments, Mayor, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. LeQuirce, do you have anything that you wanna cover with us? No, sir. Ms. Manusis, thank you for being here tonight. My pleasure, no comment. And do you have any comments? No comment. Thank you. Well, I, I like a couple of things that I would like to say is that, uh, well, now that the uh, election is over, the residents have spoken in the election to uh, proceed with the purchase of uh, the Huffman property. After the, uh, the purchase has been finalized, I would like to request to Mr. Lecouris to prepare a town hall meeting in order to get input again from the residents to see what they like to see on this property. And also, uh, Today is actually a very sad day because uh, 
I lost uh, a very good friend. And I'd like to extend my condolences to the family of Mr. Sotiris Agalatos. Mr. Agalatos was the owner of uh, TV Channel 48 and the Greek Voice. And um, we're very grateful for his contributions to the community. He'll be missed. Um, may his memory be eternal. Vice Mayor Carr. I just again want to say thank you to the, all the public comment tonight. Um, we are voted to represent the residents and the business owners of Tarpon Springs. Um, as Commissioner Donovan mentioned and other commissioners, uh, we're here. You can access us by email or phone. Um, you can call City Hall and get that information as well. So thanks again for uh, being out here tonight. Commissioner Terrapin. No additional comments, Mayor. No comments, Commissioner Donovan. Just want to thank everybody for coming again. I appreciate it. Commissioner Matikuris. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I want to thank everybody for coming. And I'd really like to work a little closer and making sure that some of these things that we discussed are um, installed to everybody's satisfaction. And, and I, who, I think it was Commissioner Donovan that uh, invited everybody to contact any of the commissioners. And I do as well. I, if, you can't just sit there and wait for us to do something. Sometimes we get distracted. So um, we, you shouldn't have to wait. You shouldn't have to try and figure out what's going on. And if we get to that point, you need to actually contact us and let us know and we'll find out for you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the, uh, that concludes the special session and it's adjourned at 25 p.m. Good night, everybody. Thank you for being here. It was so nice to be back, isn't it? Nice. Oh, my goodness, yeah.